big problems can occur with triggers where programmers simply lose track of what trigger is firing what trigger. If you have enormous numbers of triggers in Oracle databases, in fact any relational database, you can end up with serious problems as a result of having lots and lots of embedded triggers. Not only triggers that fire other triggers, but sometimes even triggers that fire each other or loop back through other triggers to fire each other again. It can get extremely complicated. Not only are triggers very slow for implementing things like referential integrity and what I'm doing here, a very simplistic form of auditing, they can actually cause such serious performance problems that it can simply kill your database. Be very careful programming a lot of triggers. You can get very serious problems. Now, let's create this events table. Here's my events table. Let's go and create this trigger. The trigger is there. Let's copy and paste these statements. Now, I could have actually typed alter trigger category compile to demonstrate the alter trigger command. Now I'm going to copy and paste in my insert and I think I typed a character in there I shouldn't have done so we'll simply copy and paste this again and we've got one row created, one row updated and one row deleted. What's next in my script file? Set the column on the event file so that I can see what's going on because it's 128 characters that's quite a lot and select everything from the event table and as you can see we have three triggered events which is what the trigger said I should do simply go and insert the value into the event description is said triggered event on category note the event date has a default of sys date so it doesn't need to specify that date field unless of course the date and the event fields were actually in the other order well then I would need to specify the date to get that description in that's besides the point. We've gone over that in the past. Now, let's go and change the trigger. Or, moreover, let's add some different triggers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split that single category trigger into three separate triggers. One called category insert, one called category update, and one called category delete. Obviously, this one is activated after insert on category. This is activated after update and so on with the delete on after delete. And obviously we're going to get a different response. What I'm trying to do is make the description in the event table more descriptive. Insert, update, delete, so I know what exactly has happened. So, let's go and copy and paste these three triggers. I typed the wrong character there, so let's go back again. Copy and paste these three triggers. Trigger created, trigger created, trigger created. Note, I can run the alter trigger and specify the trigger name and compile it. I don't have to because actually creating or replacing the trigger actually creates, passes and compiles the trigger all at once. We don't need to worry about that. So we won't execute the alter trigger command. Now, what I actually have in my database now, now here's something interesting with triggers, I haven't got something executing itself, but I've got the category trigger executing and all these insert, update and delete event triggers executing. So, I could go and drop the category trigger, but I'll choose not to because perhaps I'll need it later, unlikely, but, and I'll alter that trigger and I'll simply disable it. So there will be no events produced on the initial trigger I created, which is the category trigger. I'm now going to detect the insert, update and delete events on the category table separately. So now I'm going to run another set of insert, update and delete commands on the category table and I'm going to select everything from the events table to see exactly what the trigger has created in my events log for me. So let's paste this in here and I've got row created, updated and deleted 
and consequently, as a result of the triggers firing in the appropriate places, I have a triggered event on insert, update, and delete, respectively.